Didn't get much. They only paid once a month. And the railroad paid twice. They paid the 15th and the 30th on the railroad. Mr. Carr and uh, they'd bring the motor car and the trailer down and get their supplies and take up the river. I can remember back when they used to bring the carnival in on the train mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they brought the groceries and stuff in for Williams and Brills. Boots Ashton used to help on load the stuff over take over Brills off of the train and uh, to get flour and sugar to stuff. I think he worked at the tanner when he first started up a day or two and he quit. He married Quinn Agar, quit Madison. She had a kid that had a birthmark on her face. They took it off, I think. I guess she, maybe she's still living. I don't know. Boots Aston, was he an Indian? Him and Henry was twins. But Henry could make himself look like an Indian. Yeah, he could dress himself up. Where you go up into Tommy's, mm -hmm. you know that bridge there was just a, had side walls on it. From there up to the airport, they based that road with Crick Rock from there up there. It turned into the airport where Lon Green's kids got burned up there. And the colored people would walk from Brownsburg down there to get their mail. And uh, were there a lot? Were there a lot of colored people living in Brownsburg? Yeah, a lot of colored people. And them colored houses over along the river, they, the company didn't want to take care of them houses to keep them up. They let Leslie L. Daddy have the lower row and Sam Hintz, the one I took the insurance off, uh, lived in the house. That, Old man Jones was living in it. He took a heart attack over at Hyder Chrysler's, I heard. But uh, Dean, Alvin got it. But Nellie left him and took up with a, uh, he sold a Reader's Digest or something. he come here from New York, I believe, or something. But anyway, Nellie got dissatisfied with him and Lucille helped her get her divorce from that old man. I don't know whether he left her anything or not, but helped her get her divorce from him. And when she come back, she married Alvin. When Alvin come back out of service, she married Alvin. Upper Tannery Row was the black community. Upper Tannery Row was the black community. Upper Tannery Row, was it the black community? No, it was over on the Greenbrier Hill, over where David Sparks lives. Okay. Uh, Walter Jackson used to walk from back there where um, old man Aldridge got that place down here to work on the WPA. And uh, They had a school there, didn't they? Huh? They had a school on Greenbrier Hill. School. Greenbrier Hill. They had a school there. Yeah, they, they, now they don't know whether they're burning down or tear it down or what are they going to do with it. And Gas and Tibbs lives right on the, on the other side of it. And Gas is the first man I went to work in when I went to Tanner to work. Uh, spreading hides. I was outside 15 minutes. I didn't have no more men. Took me into spreading hides with, with Gas. And Freddie, I think he went to high school up at Greenbank before they went to transferring kids down Dunmore School. I think he finished high school. You used to boat the river and drink with Gaston all the time, didn't you? Huh? You used to boat the river and drink with Gaston? No, I um, I went up there and got some whiskey off of Gaston once Moffat Williams was with me. And um, Clarence Dunbrack was in bed with Mel Mabel. Oh my gosh. And I don't know what happened to them. What happened to them, I don't know. But Clarence drove taxi for Claude Malcolm. Was Claude Malcolm a Ku Klux man? Mm -hmm. He left the taxi into his wife's name. She died not too long ago. But June McLeod and 
He was trying to chase Sperry, I think. And they put, oh. put what's your name, June Aiken down there. Or, or, uh, they moved Neff Morrison's business up to where Simmons has got his office. How many taxi business did we have in Marlton? Huh? How many taxi business was in Marlton? How many taxi business was in Marlton? Do you know who owned them? I don't know. Who all drove taxi? Oh. Wall, Malcolm, Gilbert Jack. And Gilbert claimed that place up there where John Oscar lived. That didn't belong to him. Right. But um, Fred Jr. Got Al Jacks up there. They got into it over his place up there or something. But Al worked at the tannery. Uh, Donald, let's see, Leroy. Leroy and uh, Elmer and Donald and Clarence was uh, his boys. And Clarence. That Gibson, Ralph Gibson went in there to see his granddad, Harlan, or, and they tried to throw him out. That's uh, Margaret Ann stayed at Wilbur, Curry, Wilbur Miller, took care of her, and they took the boy in and kept him, her boy. Yeah, tried to put what's his name out. I think he threw some medicine in Margaret Ann's eyes or something. I don't know, about to put a blind in. Clarence and her. Did Gilbert, did Gilbert bootleg? Huh? Did Gilbert Jack bootleg? Gilbert Jack, did he bootleg? Oh yeah, he was bringing it from the mines. Uh, old man, um, uh, he drove taxi for him. Read. Read, uh, read, uh, read gay. And his wife took up with them, um, with Marshall Sims. They moved up there back of, she did, up there back of um, Wilbur Miller's. Mr. Goldizer come up in my place and I had an old stove up there. The grace was gone out of it and going to get her for her, for her. And I said, it's no camp. And uh, I didn't take it. Uh, 